It's 3.49 in the morning. I was lost in the dream. And somehow I came across um, my wife. I think it was the second one. Yeah. And I was married to her at the time. I'd got lost. And she didn't understand that I was at my emotional limit. I'm beaten by circumstances. And I was in a tragic state, emotionally. And I was in her arms, my head against her chest. Desperately beaten, emotionally. But I was sort of receiving her care. And I woke up, and I'm awake now. Well, I'm in this dream anyway, aren't I? in the, uh, what we call the awake state. Still dark, of course. I think it's the case. You know, I reviewed on waking. That we go through some horrendous evil I hope we don't all have to do this but in my case it's someone that loved this is especially so with my third wife someone that loved you now condemns you as having done, treated her terribly, when you haven't, of course, you've loved her to death, loved her to bits. You are utterly wrongly accused. And there's nothing you can do. You're faced somehow with horrendous evil. The one who's loved you now hates you, holds you responsible, and has condemned you to be alone from them. They were the only thing in your life. And now the worst things happened to you. I mean, they were the only thing in your life in that they were everything you loved. And they loved you. And there's no question of it, you know. It. And now they hate you. And they blame you for it. It, it just can't be the cause. You know you're not the cause. You had no, no evil intent, nothing but love. I don't know if God has this trouble. People hate God, don't they? Some, I mean, they're not just secular. They're actually hating God. You see, there's horrendous evil. I experience it still in the dreams occasionally, don't I? I feel so lost in the city, I don't know. I can't find whatever place I'm looking for. Why do 
does God have us go through this experience? The casual answer I come up with is that he loves us. And we have to know how bad evil is that we are propelled utterly, resolved utterly, to be true to the good. Come what may, there's no way one ever wants to be in that condemned evil situation. That somehow you found your way into it. And you need to never be there again. It's brief. I mean, a dream is very brief, isn't it? But it's very, very clear and very desperate. And it's breaking it to the limit. One is suffering condemnation despite being innocent. Uh, perhaps that's what the crucifixion's about. I don't know how many assuming or thinking that it could be. Perhaps that's why Jesus went through it in the story. I'm holding to it being a story, you understand. That it's his way of saying Look, I go through it too. So we love him for going through it. This distress. This distress. Just to empathize with us. He comes as a friend, you see, to those who have suffered despair and the love between us rescues us. gives us both by the experience of the desperation and the kindness of his consolation in suffering with us. And we emerge from this experience with a bondage to him. I mean a good bonding, not a bondage that holds for eternity to the love of God. So we say thank you for the experience. Though it seemed so hard to go through.
but impresses on our our personhood. An eternal loyalty to him. A bonding, a relationship. for good, for goodness, for eternity. Mm, Let me pause. You see, the rescue is not just in the context of the dream, the transitory evil experience by which I mean oppressed by evil. Even if it's a story, even if it's a dream, even if it's transitory, we contrast the evil situation with his loving kind and grace and rescue. And we are bonded with God forever. That is the magnificent beauty of your stay in this sometimes tragic universe. that you might go through something like the Holocaust. And come out the other side, utterly bonded and devoted to God forever. The evil has done a great miracle The evil experience has brought about a great security of life eternal in the embrace and loving arms of God. I will never leave you nor forsake you. I am your eternal friend. And we to him now, such that we can say thank you, God, that I'm now experiencing such love for you. forever from the evil. So quite simply, it could be saying, couldn't it, to us, was it worth it, Marshall? Yes, Lord. It's worth it. Gosh, it was hard. to be with you and know you are my eternal love forever is everything thank you dad how can we thank you for being how can we thank you for your perfect intention to by loving you eternally, by a loyalty to you that is of your own integrity. Unbreakable, eternal. Wonderful one, love you. So a story 
tragic story. Crucifixion story. Reaches into our very being as the greatest reality. of the conviction of the goodness and love and kindness and compassion of God for eternity. Mm. Thank you, Dad. Thank you, Dad. Thank you that you, your love is now eternally anchored in us by your grace and goodness and by the experience of being here in this classroom, this experience, time, space and matter, change and uncertainty. a learning situation, hard going at times, to say the least, Lord, but fleeting, thank God, that we may abide in you, your eternal goodness, your eternal kindness, and love and blessing eternally. May we be your lovely friend, Father, ever, ever, ever your lovely friend. May we be your eternal bulwark against loneliness and isolation and despair. Your faithful ones. May we be as faithful as you are. There for you and for each other and for all life. That their despair be fleeting. And that they come quickly into the eternity of your grace and goodness and joy and life eternal. Love you, Heavenly Father. Love you, Dad. Love you. Thank you, Dad. Thank you, Dad.